Hi, this is Misha, and we have been revisiting some guns we've shown in the past with the newer equipment. And I thought it was time to revisit these two here. And actually, one of these has never been on camera. I had a different model there in that first video. We're looking at guns of Hungary from World War I and World War II. In my right hand, I have the so-called Frommer Stop, also known as the Model 1912 or the 19M. And this was standard issue in the Hungarian military from the beginning of World War I and really into the 1930s. It's chambered for 7.65 Browning, at least nominally, 32, but it was issued with a slightly upscale, uploaded cartridge, and we'll get into why in a little while. Also, we have the Femuru 37M. This was standard in World War II and was used a short time afterwards as well. This also fires 7.65, but a more conventional loading. And was essentially the replacement for the 19M, the Frommer Stop. Now, Hungarian guns are very interesting, the stop especially. In the early days, there were a couple of factors why there were so many designs. Uh, today, we mostly know designs that are derived from Browning from this era, with the uh, ones from Jorgi Luger, kind of a secondary. But early on, they didn't know really what would work. For example, uh, Manlicker had several early auto pistols that could very well become standard, you just don't know. There's also designs by Kajiro Nambu and over in Japan. They were experimenting a lot. In addition to trying to find systems that worked better and were easier to produce, they also had to work around patents. It's quite interesting. Prior to World War I, and even into World War I, even combative nations were still trying to honor each other's patents. So they were still trying to kind of obey international law, kind of a gentleman's agreement type thing. So if Browning held a patent on something, people would try to work around it, maybe closely copying it, but not just straight out ripping it off. Of course, by World War II, this was all out the window, but that's the story for another day. Well, one designer, Rudolf Frommer, in Hungary, started working on self-loading pistols around 1900. And he was working with a short recoil system. Quite interesting, and that's what the Frommer stop is here. What you have is a barrel that pushes back and unlocks a bolt with kind of a rotating head, not dissimilar to say a Steyr Manlicker 1895 rifle. It's kind of a lugged rotating bolt system. We have actually two springs in this tube up here. One for the barrel, one for the bolt. As you see, we have an exposed hammer hitting a firing pin back here, very exposed back. Very interesting system. Obviously, short recoil was used in a lot of rifles, and especially the uh, Browning A5 shotgun, but you don't see it used in many pistols. In fact, Frommer was really the one who took the idea of a short recoil pistol and kind of kind of ran with it. Well, his first model was just a prototype. We know it today as the 1901, although it didn't really appear until 1903. It had a fixed magazine, which was a very popular notion in Austro-Hungary at the time, and it fired the 8x19 cartridge, which would later be adopted by the Austrian or Austro-Hungarian, to be exactly precise, military in the 1907 Roth Steyr or Roth Krinka, if you prefer. And it would lead to further developments. His next model was the 1906, 1906. That's the first time he started to introduce a version with an option of a detachable magazine. Very common feature we know today, but it was not so common in the very early 20th century. In 
And actually, this 1906, it was chambered for a Frommer cartridge called 7.65 Frommer, which was similar to 32 Browning, but shorter, more compact. And it would even be tested and go into trials by the Austro-Hungarian Cavalry when they were looking to adopt a new pistol. Now, ultimately, they would adopt the aforementioned Roth Steyr, Roth Krinka, 1907, but they did try out Frommer's 1906 model. He would take it and develop it into the model 1910, which was the first to introduce this grip safety here. It's not really a browning style because it's hinged on the bottom. It's the full back of the grip, which is honestly probably better. Sorry folks, not gonna dry fire this gun. Old guns, you get the idea? That's the only safety on it. And the Model 1910, while it never really saw a military adoption, was really Frommer's first moderate success. They would produce about 10,000 of these. At the factory we would know today as FEG, it was actually the forerunner of FEG, but still in Budapest and would, would lead to FEG afterwards. So we'll just call it FEG because I don't speak Hungarian. And quite a few would be used by Hungarian police before and during the Great War. So this was, you know, 10,000. It's not a terribly small production number. If you look at numbers of a lot of these early self-loading pistols, there were far, far more known designs today that they made fewer of. So reasonably successful, considering especially, in a way, Frommer was kind of an amateur. His background wasn't really in arms design, but he did meet both Mr. Roth and Mr. Krinka and worked under them and with them. So he kind of learned from other successful designers. And he was really more of a, a clerk who got into this because he worked at the FEG factory. Interesting story. You know, he was kind of a hobbyist and he wanted to design something for Hungary to be Hungarian, made in Hungary, designed in Hungary. And that's kind of where the 1910 came from. But he knew he could do better. So through about 1914, he worked on this gun here. This is the Frommer Stop. Definitely his most successful design. Some people call this the 12M, model 1912. Although it didn't really go into production until a little later. It's based on his previous work. But he's simplified it. For mass production, although this is still an incredibly complicated gun, especially field stripping. Also, it is chambered for 7.65 Browning 32, although as I said at the beginning of the video, it's a the, the one that the Hungarians would issue with it was a much warmer cartridge. That's to operate this system, because we do have technically a locked breech, even though it's a 32. So a little harder round was needed to have reliable cycling. We have the grip safety. We have an eight round mag. Earlier versions would have hard rubber grips. Later they would go to these wood grips, actually quite early. We have a lanyard loop in the back that rotates. Fixed iron sights. The barrel is actually mounted below. This top is a tube for the recoil springs, as I said. Because of the recoil system, we don't have to have a lot in the back here. This gives us about a six and a half inch, excuse me, six and a half inch overall length with about three and three quarters of that being barrel. It's a relatively long barrel. We don't have a bunch of slide hanging off. This is also a very light pistol. It's only about 22 ounces. So for the day and time, quite light. No bolt hold open, nothing like that. Feature-wise, it's pretty straightforward. It's also just a single piece frame, really. This whole thing is one piece, which was challenging the machine, to say the least. Lots of pins and springs in it. So, pretty complicated design. Because of that, the Austrian half of the Empire wasn't really interested in it. However, when World War I began, all of Steyr's production in Austria was needed for the Austrian military, so FEG for Hungary started producing this model here. It was adopted by the Hungarian army, especially reserves, police, 
and so they would put this into full production by 1914. It did what it needed to do. Keep in mind, again, we're still in the early days of auto loaders, so considering it had an 8 plus 1 capacity, still better than a revolver. And of course, this is mostly would be a defensive gun, and it is relatively compact. It's pretty light. It's got a grip safety. You know, it has some assets to it, but it also has some major drawbacks. It was successful enough, though, that not only Hungary used it, but other allied nations, such as Bulgaria, would receive some. And actually, between 1916 and 1917, about 37,000 would be sent to Imperial Germany. So quite a large number, frankly. And of course, issued there as needed. There's not a lot of service history to talk about because it was World War I. This was just mostly carried. You can imagine this system was really fiddly to take apart in the trenches, so it didn't get cleaned an awful lot. I mean, I'm not even going to try to take it apart on camera because you really need tools. You, get, you press in this, this comes off, then you press in back here, that comes off. It's, yeah, then springs and things. No thanks. It would remain standard in the Hungarian part of the empire until the end of the war in 1918. And then in 1919, a now independent Hungary would re-adopt it. A standard issue is the 19M, model 1919. And at this point, the original production run was over. FEG had produced about 275,000. So a very significant number of pistols for that day and time. After re-adoption, between that time and around 1928-1929, they would produce another 90,000 pistols, bringing a total up to around 365,000, give or take. So, a very respectable number for what it was. Definitely Frommer's most um, successful design, and very interesting from a historical collecting standpoint. But, yeah, it's actually hard to find these in good shootable condition today because they're just kind of fiddly. There's just so many little things that can go wrong or wear out. This one's got pretty good springs in it, but most of them I picked up did not. They just get tired over time. You've got two small springs working together. But definitely a really neat part of history. Really the last gasp of this gun, of course the ones that were already in service in Hungary would stay in service through at least the 40s. Also in the 1930s when they were needing extra guns, some of these would be reissued in Austria, mostly to police, sometimes to preserve military units. So Austria would reissue a few of them at this time. And a few more would be sent to Czechoslovakia after World War I. Mostly kind of war reparations, things of that nature. They also would send them the Steyr 1895 Mannlicher type rifles and other things, but just here and there. So it would have a, a career in the uh, interwar period. But by World War II, these were basically being shelved, either retired or given to local police or, you know, just pushed further and further back in the ranks. By the time of the end of World War II, these were pretty much just all gone. You get into the communist era and they're just a thing of the past. They didn't have spare parts for them. They didn't feel like keeping them up and maintaining them. They would refurbish quite a few of the World War I ones during the 1920s, though. As for the Femuru 37M, this was Frommer's last design. By the mid-1920s, probably even from the beginning, the Hungarian government, the Hungarian military, knew that it wanted to replace the older Frommer stop with something more reliable, much easier to mass produce, just simpler, so on and so forth. But it took time. In 1929, Frommer introduced his Model 1929, which was a simple blowback gun. And it was chambered for 9 by 17 9 millimeter curves, which he had experimented with in the older 
Frommer stop design, even doing a 9mm Frommer cartridge, but really it was the 7.65 that took off in that. But with the 1929, 9mm curves would be introduced, and this became a simple blowback gun. There was no reason for the lock breech system. It also had a more traditional fry, uh, slide frame, longer barrel, little heavier, little larger gun. It was kind of a patterned off a of Browning design to some extent. It's your typical single action blowback. This would be adopted by the military as the 30M, but they wanted some changes. So throughout the 30s, Frommer would work with a team on this gun here, the 37M, which was really an update. It would feature redesigned frame ergonomics. It would have a simp uh, simplified slide, smaller hammer. They would introduce the finger rest to the magazine. And a lot of these updates weren't actually done by Frommer himself because he had failing health. In fact, he passed away in 1936 before this was even officially adopted by the military as the 37M. What they would adopt would be in 9mm Kurs. It would have a grip safety, single action only trigger, hammer I should say, saying the trigger, simple blowback here, slide hold back on the last round, slide release. It was adopted in 9mm Kurs, which had a 7 round magazine, about a 7.3 inch barrel, so a little nearly an inch longer than the original Frommer. But we're also longer over it all, about 4.3 inches. And we weigh quite a bit more. We're at about 28 ounces for the 9mm Kurs version. This would be adopted as standard issue for the Hungarians before World War II and manufactured and used during that war. It was a good, solid, reliable sidearm for them. Simple blowback, but if, you know, what they needed, 9mm Kurs was fine for a defensive gun. Honestly, I think it's a better made gun than the Beretta 1934, which was also a 9mm Kurs, or as they called it, Corto. Trigger is military. It's a little, it's clean with a good break, like kind of like a glass rod style break, but it's, it's heavy, but I'm sure that was more of a safety feature because the original version only had the Frommer style grip safety. It also has the Frommer style lanyard and mag release. Now this is actually the 7.65 version manufactured for Nazi Germany. In 1941, the Luftwaffe contracted with FEG to manufacture 50,000 M37s, but in 7.65 for them, that's because Germany really was trying to standardize on either 9x19 Parabellum or 7.65 Browning. So they didn't really want 9mm curves. After the first thousand or so were delivered, they requested FEG to add this Browning style thumb safety here. Can't go on when the hammer's up, pull it back. Now we have a secondary safety in addition to the grip. These early contract guns would be well made. They would deliver the 50,000. But from there, it gets a little murky. Getting it to 1943, Hungary wasn't really happy with the way the war was going. And so they had some secret negotiations by 1944 with the UK and, and other allies to try to maybe kind of switch sides. So around the same time, 1943, the Luftwaffe wanted a second contract of guns this time ordering 35,000. Now these guns being made more under duress and less um, open-mindedly, you know, less willingly, these 43 dates tend to be a little rougher, but the contract would still be fulfilled. 
And in addition to the Luftwaffe using these, the German army would acquire some overflow of the 85,000 or so. There's even rumors that Germany negotiated with production rights for this gun, so obviously they might have liked it, but they never put it into production, so we don't really know, but they seem to have been suitably impressed. It did see combat. Hungarian forces carried it into the invasion of Russia in 41, also the invasion and occupation of Yugoslavia. So it, it did see from some frontline use in the Eastern Front areas. And it proved itself very nice. A very good, simple, dependable gun. Oh, I forgot to mention, in 32, it's back to having an eight round mag, by the way. Well, by 1944, Hungary became an occupied nation by Nazi Germany. These were kept in production, although they were restricted who could get firearms because of the whole occupation thing. And then the following year, 45, Hungary was liberated by the Soviet Russians. Liberated in air quotes, really, but you know how that goes. They would keep this in standard service after the war. They would build some guns, both in 9mm curves and 7.65 using leftover parts and they even tried to kind of start production up after the war but it didn't it didn't happen so all of these were made between 37 and 45 or you know depending on when you want to date the parts numbers are a little sketchy on these some say 185,000 were made some say as many as 300,000 I think it depends who's counting and not counting the German contract guns Either way, they made a large number, although not as many as this Frommer design here. The Frommer stopped. The 37N would remain in service in Hungary through the 1950s, really until it was replaced by the various Hungarian Makarovs, such as the first the RK-59, then the R-61, and then finally, of course, the one the military went to, the PA-63. And of course, it was retired out, same story. But neat little guns, very much Hungarian. And worth remembering and looking at from time to time in history. And the quality we expect from FEG. Well, if you have either of these yourself, we'd love to hear about them in the comments. If you have any questions, please ask them or... We'll answer if we can below. If you liked the video, please click like. And if you'd like to help support us, please check on our Patreon page. This is Misha. We really appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, you can't hold back on the hammer. You have to let it go forward. Not a bad safety feature. And we'll catch you next time.